Hi folks, uh, as a practicing herbalist and a beekeeper, I'm always looking at ways to grow wild plants, what everyone else calls weeds. You'll find that uh, most beekeepers are botanists. And uh, so we, you know, on cold winter days, we're reading magazines about uh, different plants. Not only for uh, herbology, but for beekeeping. So for example, this is mullen right here. And the bees will gather um, uh, pollen off of the mullen flowers. There's no nectar, but it is both uh, a pollen source for them. And then the leaves are gathered by herbalists traditionally. Uh, you can look up in botanical books what mullen does. In Ireland, it's called Old Man's Blanket, which is a reference to how it makes a soothing tea for the lungs. It's primarily a respiratory tea. This is um, buckwheat from last year's. This was a field of buckwheat last year. This yellow plant down here is uh, bird's foot trefoil, uh, or trefoil, a very good, uh, it's a bee plant. Uh, red clover is used medicinally um, and bees do work it, although more bumblebees because it's a little big for honeybees. I usually see bum bumblebees on the, on the red clover. Uh, bees prefer Dutch white clover, which I do grow. This is St. John's wort right there. Um, we've got colt's foot. I can barely move without hitting a medicinal worthy plant. We got colt's foot right here. As you can see, it's about the shape of a colt's foot. I mean, the size of a colt's foot. Uh, I'll, I'll just kind of start pointing. There's dandelion on the ground. Um, we're coming to the end of the red clover. It's gone to seed. And this grayish looking plant has gone to seed. It's called blue weed here. It's got lovely blue weed. Uh, blue flowers on it um, and it is starting to turn gray and go to seed but blue weed or vipers bug loss is an amazing bee plant it blooms just before it's, it blooms at the same time as basswood which I'll try to point out when I see a good tree in a second so the the nectar from blue weed and basswood and clover and wildflower makes a really nice white July honey and then now that the blue weed is gone to seed, the thistles are emerging. And so the thistles are just starting. And here's a lovely thistle flower, which I think is gorgeous. They're just starting to emerge. And I can see just by glancing around here, four different subspecies of bees. I can see, uh, uh, a, honey, a wild bumblebee over there. Uh, I just, uh, there, there's a couple types of wasps over here and uh, bee, uh, two different types of wasps. There's another type of bumblebee. There's another wasp. So we're already at about six species right now. Plus my honeybees are around. I see, I see butterflies as well. So there's nothing wrong with a field of weeds. Uh, the people that are obsessed with killing weeds and using chemicals to do so, maybe they should just go back. Well, at least they're not fighting in trench warfare and using it. Although there still are people using those chemicals in war, right? So we need to stop waging war against creatures. They're everywhere and they're important. This is early goldenrod starting. Here we are, third week of July and goldenrod's already coming out. I think there's about seven species of goldenrod in, in uh, Ontario. By the way, the white is Queen Anne's lace. And bumblebees and honeybees don't go on them, but on each Queen Anne's lace, I see a tiny little hornet of some sort. So it's some form of pollinator. It's, it's licking nectar and pollen off the little Queen Anne's lace plant. 
Right over there on the Viper's bug loss is a, another style of a bumblebee. So there's two, there's at least two species of bumblebee going around. Just right now, we've only been out here a minute and we're, I'm already seeing two, which is a good sign. And there's honeybees right there from my colonies. I see three of them. One's on a red clover, one's on a viper's bug loss, but they'll move, they'll jump all over the place.